everything else today uh, was destruction, was absolutely destruction. Um, you know, we had some pretty aggressive pivots. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Uh, let's see, let me, let me put it this way. I wanna give you an example. Going into today, right, going into today, I don't think I could have been more bullish more bullish than I could have possibly been going into a trading day, going off of a bottom, right? Off of a bottom, uh, reclaiming the 10 day moving average. Granted, again, we've been in a bear market now for the last you know five months or so. Uh, we've been sell buys pretty much all the way down. If you've been watching this video, it's pretty much on a daily basis. But again, like all bear markets and all uh, extreme sell offs, we, we've, we've had pockets of opportunities uh, to trade on the on the long side as well, but again, the most important part is, and, and this is kind of goes out uh, to any um, any uh, you know wanting longevity type of trader, aspiring trader. You, again, you, you have to learn how to trade on both sides of the market, uh, because again, you could be theoretically wrong all the time. As long as you're not a a stubborn mule, you don't have to be financially wrong, and that's the most important part of any market, of any uh, single trading day. But uh, I tell you, going into uh, today's session, if you went through your charts last night. Everything was super bullish. Amazon looked like this thing was ready to just go out of its mind. Tesla looked like it was about to reclaim these two channels here, confirm macro, and start going to this 8032 call, uh, 832 levels. We saw 800 weeklies. We saw 900 weeklies coming in. Just an, a really, really aggressive move. And the video, all the first couple of days, 185 calls, 190 calls, 185 calls in nausea and everything set up so so well and you know i've always maintained uh, i've always maintained this stat right you could get prepared for a session you could put your research for a session the most important part is you have to trade the market you have not the market you want and when you woke up this morning I looked and I saw the NASDAQ futures down 120 points. I was like, ah, okay, it's not that big of a deal. Because the first thing when I wake up, you know, when I wake up and I, you know, you know, do, you know, do, do the things everybody wakes up, you wake up, you, you know, take the cold out of your eyes, uh, you look at your phone, you're like, ah, okay, whatever, we were up a good amount yesterday, um, you know, whatever, good open, it's, it's exactly what you want, trap the early shorts and start moving back higher. And you start looking at the news why the market was down and, <laughs> I tell you, you, I could understand, you know, one of these growth stocks, right, being down, you know, like a, you know, like a letter U or a TDOC or UPST or one of these, you know, dozens and dozens of growth stocks that got absolutely destroyed. But when you saw pre-market, that target was going to be uh, an area of the tape, right, an area of the tape that is going to put pressure just because it'll give you a sense of what Main Street America is going through, then everything really turned left very, very aggressively. And when you look at what the data is, right, the economic data, and you talk about uh, inflation, right, inflation rising, the cost of living, the gas prices rising, uh, combine that with uh, asset classes, you know, really coming in, right, really coming in, whether it's uh, the equities market, whether it's, um, the futures market, excuse me, the futures market, the equities market, uh, the NFTs, crypto, whatever the case may be, the Bitcoin markets, right? It's starting to put a lot of pressure, right? In in the in the the lower uh, lower, I, I hate using those words, but the middle class, the the people who are a little bit on the poor side, and that's starting to really bubble into everyday life. And when you look at the spending or the lack of spending in names like a Walmart or Amazon, for example, missing a couple of their last few quarters, you really come to, you know, you really come to respect how effective this inflation thing really is. And, and first, when we started talking about inflation, you know, maybe it didn't, you know, maybe it didn't, uh, you know, affect you on a day-to-day -day basis. And you start looking around, it's like, you know, the, 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 the gallon of milk that you paid, you know, say 4.99 
three months ago, you're paying $8.99 for it. Now, again, doesn't mean it's not a big deal. No, $4 shouldn't affect anybody's lives, but that's kind of the big deal. That's what it is. And you're seeing people uh, getting absolute squeezed. Uh, the gas prices are through the roof. Inflation's through the roof. Come on. It, and everything, and the, and the translation is very, very simple. And it did really kind of remind everybody, right? That we are, again, we are still in a bear market, okay? And even though, uh, even though uh, you know, obviously all the long setups, for the exception of a couple, you know, there's actually a couple that actually uh, confirmed and went higher, but everything else today uh, was destruction, was absolutely destruction. Um, you know, we had some pretty aggressive pivots um, you know, let me let me log this thing in. Uh, we had some pretty pretty damn aggressive pivots uh, to the downside. Amazon, you know, a lot of us were long overnight. Obviously, didn't turn out well. Thank God for that thirty dollar candle into the close yesterday, right? So at least we had a little bit of cushion, but ultimately we wound up losing like twenty seven thirty dollars uh, on the trade. But again, at the end of the day, right? Again, we you know we don't sit there and wallow and woe is me and this is bad and everything is bad and the market sucks again you trade both sides of the market and that's the most important part uh you're trading both sides of the market you're putting in uh you're putting in your work you're putting in your effort and you're not sitting there uh like a hopeless deer in headlights you're, you're trying to get back uh where the market sentiment is and it really does show you how quickly everything turned we literally went and it took us four days right four days to reclaim uh, the five and the 10 day moving average and you know, hell man, I, oh my God, my, my friends, some of my buddies got absolutely destroyed today. They went really, really more aggressively than they should have, which I get, I get it. There was like 200 stocks I could have put on the watch list yesterday. But again, we're wrong, right? We're human beings, we're gonna be wrong. And, I, and I, again, as long as you're not wrong, uh, as long as you're not wrong, uh, to the point that you can't rationalize it, you'll be fine. Uh, in this type of environment, again, one of the things that are always going to save you, especially if you're taking anything overnight, you got to have a hedge. We, we, we've been talking about hedging properly, you know, hedging properly uh, in markets that are not bullish bias. And for example, even though Amazon was just terrible, right? Absolutely terrible uh, uh, on the overnight exposure, at least you got some cues as a hedge, right? So when cues opened up down five, six points, it's a little bit of, you know, it's not the whole hickey. You're not removing the whole hickey, but at least it, you're, 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 you're kind of glancing the blow and it, it, it's, it doesn't turn out as bad uh, as it should. But yeah, I mean, market, it made its stance. You know, you had a 1200 point move down on the Dow. You had like, what, five, six percent on the Nasdaq. You know, brutal, just an absolute brutal. Now, you know, you're looking at the bottom of the range here. Uh, where the low from last week, you're talking about 280, you know, 284, 285. And again, if you look at the weekly view uh, of, of the QQQs, you could, you could see where the next uh, measured potential is. If we start losing, you know, again, if, right, everything's contingency. Things have to happen. You don't just say it's going to happen. We don't know. I have no idea. The market could rally 500 points tomorrow. Who the hell knows? But the point is, at least you have a line in the sand here on the weekly chart on the cues. You're obviously looking at uh, today's low as a uh, as a barometer. You're looking at last week's low off this 284 level as a barometer to kind of see how much more aggression we do have. And again, before putting the cart in front of the horse, at least you can see where you can have measure potential if we start uh, building below uh, both of these channels. So you know it's tough, man. It's tough. I I again, if you're a a perma bull T today was really your chance right i know yesterday we had the big move on the fed and it was all great and you know but again powell has these big rallies right because of powell we had we had this rally we had this rally right and we had this rally yesterday and again it really does show that history does it, it, uh, kind of repeat itself but man that close was bullish wasn't it unbelievably bullish um i had so many longs i was watching today obviously you know, 99.9% uh, of them did not trigger. Uh, the actual couple of longs that did, you know, gave a little bit of flow for all you guys who trade on the long side. I was waiting for the, you know, I was waiting for the short side to confirm, but boy, oh boy, when you see target dropping, you know, 25, 27% intraday, it really does tell you and shows a pretty damn big picture uh, where, uh, you know, where the economy is, right? You know, we usually sometimes talk about a disconnect between the uh, Main Street and Wall Street, but you can really, really see uh, how the lack of spending in names uh, like Walmart, like, I mean, look at everything got taken down. You got Costco got absolutely wrecked. Uh, Walmart day two, right? You got Kohl's, 
You go, all of them, right? Every single one of them, this would make a difference. And they took down Amazon with it, right? Amazon is retail. At the end of the day, yeah, they could sell cool little knickknacks and fidget spinners and blow up sex dolls and all, whatever you want. But at the end of the day, it's still all retail and everything came in uh, very, very aggressively. So let's talk about uh, today's pivot. So obviously, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of bad news here. And again, and here's the thing, man. And, and, and I think this is a very important point. When, when the NASDAQ was down 120 points, and I've, I've always maintained this, and keep this in mind. When you have a bias, right? When you have a bias to one side of the market and, you and your research is showing that side of the market, I, and, and the futures open up the complete opposite direction of your research tells you, what I always do, I always want to give it at least a candle or two, okay? I, we trade 60 minute candles, so there's six candles in a day. I want to always give it at least a candle or two to kind of see if that side of the market of your research can shake things off and start going in that direction. And here's my, you know, here's my point, I go, Q's closed, above the 10 day moving average, target news, spooking the market. Let's see if the bulls can fight back, right? And at one point, they actually did a little bit. Tesla was only down like what, four? Um, you know, they actually fought back a little bit. I go, look, we'll give the bulls the benefit of the doubt for the first two candles and then reassess, right? And now, and that was the, the main uh, focus here. So initially, uh, Rivian actually had a nice little pop for all you guys. Again, I didn't trade Rivian. Again, I was just waiting for the bot, uh, the bottom channels that finally, you know, did pretty well. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, Rivian, 28 needs to build. Here was Rivian, right? For all you guys, it took a nice little movie. There was nothing wrong with it. it took out 28 bucks. We talked about Rivian last night. Took out 28 and traded right to the next supply of 29.20. It's actually a nice move. It doesn't make a difference. Bull or bear market. It was actually a really nice move. You saw uh, short-term 30 and $40 calls uh, coming in. So that was a nice move. Uh, the initial pivot on Tesla was 770. We'll get to the pivot to the downside in a second. Uh, 184 obviously came nowhere close to pivoting on NVIDIA. AMD actually took out the previous high, 103.20. Uh, it only went up a dollar, but the point is, yeah, I mean, some names did kind of wake up, right? It, it, you know, it took out 103.20, went to 104.20, and then obviously just a tremendous, disgusting uh, reversal. And here is, you know, here is you started seeing all these, um, all these sell buying coming in here. I still like the Square. I know, I know Square did okay today at one point of the day, but I, I like the Square, guys. Watch the Square here below the 78, 79 dollars. I think. Next couple of days, if the market continues to see weakness, this thing's in a tank. But obviously, uh, it didn't confirm. And here is here is where the downside buyers came in one by one by one. Uh, Eighty Netflix uh, one eighty three thirty. If it builds below, it can flush more. Here is Netflix, right? So it took out the one eighty three forty, which is the bottom of the range here on the five day moving average and went all the way down to 176. I think if 176 starts to confirm, and you can see that was the 513 low, it's also yesterday's low. If this 176 confirms, I think there's another 13 points uh, to the downside there as well. Uh, Dash, uh, 65, 20, 65, if it builds below, can flush more. Obviously, here's Rivian, uh, 29 on deck. Here's Dash, right? Uh, there is Dash, took out the 65.20, went down to 63. I still think this thing goes lower, below 63. I think it's these 56.57. Uh, Tesla, yeah. So here's, here is definitely the big one here. Uh, the macro trades, we started, we, we, the macro view was 729, 719, right? Once we saw the market fall apart, it was forget about the long side, start looking to the downside. Um, there was a sneaky pivot, right? We started watching 745. There was a sneaky pivot at 745 and then a confirmation below 7, 736 before it got the macro. So we started shorting this thing at 745. Not only did we see the June 700 puts, guys, the, the amount of buyers that were coming in for the seven, seven figure buyers of the 700s at one point was very, very aggressive. And you, you can tell here, it took out the 745, took out the 729, set, took out the 719, went all the way down to 700. You know, look, Tesla confirms that, Tesla confirms 700 tomorrow, man. We're gonna go down to 680. That was last week's lows. Um, they were coming in, massive buyer came in for the June 500 puts, okay? They skipped the six, they went to the 500s. There's a lot of selling pressure on this thing in the options market. 
So definitely one to watch. Yeah, here it is right here. June, a buyer came in right here. A buyer came in for the June 500 puts, 3.6 million. Uh, one that we forgot to put on the feed, but all you guys are listening to the webinar anyway. Uh, there was a really aggressive, uh, you know, we got, got hit on Amazon at the open. And, and then you got to flip, flip gears. So here was the opening range low right here. It stopped at uh, 21.97, and that was the opening range low. Congratulations for all you guys are still holding this thing. I, you know, I think this thing cracks. Like, it really, really cracks. It was a big move uh, down about 70 points uh, to the downside. And if you look at the daily chart on Amazon, again, it got below the 5, got below the 10, uh, got below this 21.56 level. You know, this thing has room. If the market continues to go down, this thing does have room uh, all the way to 20.48. Um, so look, there was a really good adjustment and that's the most important part, guys. Again, you're going to be wrong, right? I don't care about being right, being wrong. It's, it's not a popularity contest. We don't care about, you know, what it likes and shares and all that bullshit. Excuse my French, of course. Um, uh, the most important part is be a professional. Okay. Even if you're trading for a week, it's okay to be wrong, right? As long as your research is valid and it doesn't confirm, it's okay. You're allowed to switch to the other side, right? If you Google the word trader, right, versus investor, well, there you are. You'll get a whole explanation. So it's very, very important to have an open mind. We do know macro where we are. We've been talking, we've been a sell bias market for a long time with periods of upward bias. But man, oh man, was I bullish going into the day. And man, oh man, I am not now. Having said that, we'll probably rally a thousand points because this market will never follow through. I'm just joking. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. But again, let's watch the channels to the downside tomorrow. And if there is an inside day tomorrow, and we get a little bit of a dead cat bounce tomorrow in the market, that's the day you kind of want to chill, right? You don't want to play the dead cat bounce. What you want to do is make sure if we do have a dead cat bounce tomorrow, that it's an inside the day that doesn't take out the highs, then doesn't take out the lows and wait for those channels to confirm down. Because if they do confirm down, then there is a whole big pocket of downside levels still to go all the way back down to the 284 level. Look, is this market easy? Absolutely not. There's no such thing as an easy market. There's no such thing as a fun market, but there's a market there's that you can control. And control is everything, risk is everything, but the most important thing is process and staying in business. Guys, God bless, stay safe, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.